Brothers and sisters, I am so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And I'm just Joe, no title. And today the message is, Children Go to Heaven. And so we're going to look in the Bible to see what the Lord tells us about that. Before we start, I want to say a prayer for all the family members that lost their children in that mass shooting in Texas. Nine and ten-year-olds died. Let us bow our heads. We'll say a prayer for those family members. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. Please comfort all the family members and friends of those little children that died this week with your power and mighty and loving Holy Spirit. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. And so if you brought your Bibles today, please turn to 2 Samuel chapter 12. And to set the stage, David had committed adultery with a man's wife named Bathsheba, and she has a child. And the Bible tells us that we reap what we sow in Galatians. And so God stricken the child with sickness. And for seven days, David fasts and prays for the life of the child. But the child dies. And so we'll start reading in verse 20. So David rose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, changed his clothes, and went into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then his servants said, You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child died, you rose and ate food. And he said, While the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me, that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him. But he shall not return to me. So now God has clearly revealed to David that his young child who died went to heaven. Amen? Amen. And he's telling him that he too will be with him someday in heaven. So those people in Texas and everywhere else where children die, they know that they're in heaven waiting for their parents to arrive. Amen? Amen. In the first chapter of Deuteronomy, the word speaks of little children have no knowledge of good and evil. Our God is a just God. And children have no knowledge of good and evil. They can't discern and deliberate whether this is good or bad or right or wrong. And so God automatically takes them to heaven. Now, what age does he start to judge them? We look in the book of Luke chapter 2. Jesus was 12 years old, and he's found in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding. So children from 12 years up, they have understanding. And so if you have a child that's that age or higher, you need to bestow to them the importance of loving Jesus, believing in Jesus, and keeping their mind on the Lord. And all will be well with them. Amen? Amen. So now we're going to look at another story of children dying. Please turn with me to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 33. And to set the stage, this is a king named King Manasseh, and he's king in Jerusalem, and he does evil in the sight of the Lord. And so we'll pick it up in verse 6. Also he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He practiced soothsaying and used witchcraft and sorcery, and he consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not listen. 
Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bonds fetters, and carried him off to Babylon. Now when he was afflicted, he employed to the Lord and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed to him. And he received his entreaty, heard his supplication, and brought him back to Jerusalem in his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. Now first, we have to see how terrible this is, what he did. He killed his own children, sacrificed his own children in the fire. It's horrible. It's worse than that young man going in that elementary school and shooting those little children. Both are horrible events. Both is an eye-opener to us. That we cannot kill little children. People that abort their children is no different than King Manasseh sacrificing his own children. It's the same thing. God loves children. He loves them. The scripture says that do not despise little children because their angels see the face of the Father in heaven every day. God loves children. And so, people have to stop killing children. All things happen for a reason. Nothing happens that God does not allow. When a child cries, God is there. This happens so people would wake up and stop killing their children. But we also read here that God is a merciful God. And he forgives Manasseh for killing his children. He puts them back in his kingdom. And you, if you have done this horrible sin, had an abortion and killed a child that God made, it doesn't go unanswered. As Galatians says, you reap what you sow. You can't destroy something that God has made and not know that it doesn't go unanswered. But God will forgive you and have mercy on your soul. And you can be with your child in heaven that beat you to heaven someday. If you have remorse in your heart and you repent and you serve Jesus by pleasing God and doing his will. And so now, brothers and sisters, and if you have a contrite heart, if you believe that Jesus died, was buried, and arose, and if you have backslid, that means have gone back to sinning the way you did before you were saved, you need to repent genuinely in your heart. If you need to be led in a prayer of repentance, please bow your heads now and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. I am a sinner, Father. I have sinned. Please, Lord, forgive me for all the sins that I have done. And even sins I did, I didn't know were sins. Please, Father, help me to renew this carnal mind Please replace this stony heart into a pure, loving heart. Help me, Lord, to make the proper changes to serve you, Lord, to please you and do your will. Please, Father, fill me up with your Holy Spirit. And write my name in the book of life. And seal me for the day of redemption. 
And I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. And so, brothers and sisters, we need to be regenerated every day. Every morning, you need to get on your knees and ask the Lord to regenerate you and fill you up with the Holy Spirit before you take on the day. Because you can lose the Holy Spirit. So, always remember to keep your mind on the Lord and stay on that narrow path to heaven. Amen? Amen.